I get introduced to Lionel Richie and I could tell that Lionel Richie doesn't know me, has never heard of me, but because I'm the only other black male at this event, he acts like he knows me. Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm Roy Wood Jr. When traveling, make sure. <laughs> So when I first started doing hip hop music, even though I'm known for doing music that has a message, and music that is not empty, and music that is not vacuous, I grew up wanting to be a rap star. I didn't grow up wanting to be a conscious rapper. I grew up, I wanted to be LL Cool J, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be famous for being a sexy motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But by the time my career took off, I was, I was on a label called Raucous Entertainment. And myself and most Def, we had a group called Black Star, right? And, <laughs> See, I was cheap for applause, because I don't got no jokes, you know what I'm saying? So, I said, most Def, so y'all could applaud, and Black Star, y'all familiar with that shit. So by, by the time we blew up, the whole raucous movement, the whole underground movement, it was looked at as the vanguard for conscious rap. Like they looked at us as, as bringing back the sounds of Boogie Down Production and Public Enemy and Rock Him and Big Daddy Kane and everything. So my homeboys, like I was like 18, 19 years old, my homeboys started going to strip clubs and having fun and doing all the debauchery and stuff, but they didn't even invite me to the strip club because they heard my records and they thought Kwali wouldn't want to come to the strip club with us. <laughs> And one of my best friends in the world, like he worked, he was a bartender at the strip club when we was like 19. I didn't find this out till we were like 32. You know what I'm saying? Cause they never told me. I was like, yo, y'all niggas hanging out at the strip club? Y'all don't tell me? They was like, you, you kick all that conscious rap. You don't want to hang out at the strip club. So by the time I got on in the music business and I started making money in the music business, I really, 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 really wanted to go to a strip club. Not just the strip club, but all the parties. So I was partying it down. Like anybody who knows me from when I first started my career, you heard my records and it was conscious rap. And I was in the streets. Like I don't just talk online. I don't just talk on records. I go to the rallies. I go to the protests and all that. But I also go to the nightclubs. You know what I'm saying? I also turn up. So the first time I ever went to a strip club in my life, I went with Jermaine Dupri <laughs> and Janet Jackson. Because I was working on a song with Jermaine Dupri. He had an artist that had sampled one of my records. He wanted me to be on the remix and everything. And shout out to Jermaine Dupri. But here's my advice. If you've never been to a strip club in your life, do not go with Jermaine Dupri. <laughs> do not go with Janet Jackson. And make sure you don't go in Atlanta. <laughs> because if you go to a strip club with Jermaine Dupri and Janet Jackson in Atlanta, nothing will top that motherfucking experience. <laughs> So after my first strip club experience, I, I tried to top that strip club experience. And because I was now making rap money, I was starting my career, I tried to go to all the fly strip clubs. And the fly strip clubs in this country are in Atlanta and in Miami and Portland. Surprisingly, Portland, Oregon got some. <laughs> Portland, Oregon is it's that shit. <laughs> but so I was working on my album and um, I booked a ticket. This story has a lot of valleys and peaks, so just stay with me. I booked a ticket to Miami because I'm like, I'm going to Miami to turn up. So I get to Miami and I knew some girls who were some party girls and they do, do all the parties. And this girl called me, she said, come to this party. Are you in Miami? Cause she, I told her I was going to Miami. She said, yeah. She said, come to this party. I, I said, where is it at? She said, it's in the Bahamas. So I was like, after some convincing, I went. And these girls, um, let's just call them um, Brittany and Amber. They weren't white girls. I know those sound like white girl names. But I'm trying to throw the scent off. You know what I'm saying? So Brittany and Amber, they invited me to this party. But they said, listen, if you come, you just got to follow the rules. So I was like, what is this? Some like eyes wide shut type shit? Okay. <laughs> So I fly to Bahamas and I, I get off and they tell me that I need to come to the Peter 
the residence. Now, Peter is like a textile, super rich billionaire. You understand what I'm saying? He's a billionaire dude. And so at first, when I first get to the island, nobody wants to take me there. They say no one's allowed on the property. Um, I finally convinced a driver to take me there. He drops me off in front and I get picked up by one of Peter representatives he comes on a golf cart to the front of the gates the gates was all opulent and decadent like lifestyles of the richest famous and i felt like i was in a ian fleming james bond situation you know what i'm saying and um the guy picks me up and the guy who picks me up is asking me about hip-hop and i'm like yeah i rap he's like yeah i, I only listen to frank sinatra you know what i'm saying <laughs> and so immediately i'm starting to feel like maybe i'm not in the right place you know what I'm saying? and there's like spider monkeys I'm saying spider monkeys because that sounds official. I don't know what kind of monkeys they was. <laughs> but there was monkeys. You know what I'm saying? There was peacocks and all types of wildlife. It's like a two day, three day long thing. I'm staying in this tree house and it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I'd never seen nothing like this. And um, I order some food and the guy to bring my food is a Norwegian guy who says to me, you know what, Kwali? I saw you perform with Black Star in Norway back in the days and the show that he mentioned was the first time I'd ever been to Norway. It was me, high tech, most deaf, in some bar in Norway. It was a small bar, it was smaller than this bar we in now. And it was like four people in there. I remember, it was like four people in this bar. And this kid in the Bahamas is like, I saw you perform at that bar in Norway. And I'm like, wow, okay. What are you doing here? He's like, I've been working here for Peter and And, um, you know, I was like, okay, wow, it made me feel good because this is, again, at the beginning of my career. So then the girls come and I'm hanging out with the girls and uh, Brittany and Amber and all their friends and there's a bunch of other girls and uh, they finally explained to me what, what's happened. And they say, we work for Peter and because we know all the party people, our job is to invite people here for parties that he has. And this is his birthday party. It's going to be a huge party and you're going to be here for the next few days. It's going to be fun. And I say, okay, great. And say, one rule, you cannot speak to Peter because right? they got me fucked up they think I'm one of them you know what I'm saying but in my mind I'm like I'm Talib Kweli you know what I'm saying I'm going to speak to whoever I, the fuck I feel like speaking to when I feel like speaking so me and the girls have a big argument because they feel like I'm about to mess up their whole situation because I'm just being arrogant about who I am and so we're about to have a dinner and we find out that he's going to have a special guest performer for his birthday party. And the special guest performer is Lionel Richie. Right. right, dance on the ceiling, Lionel Richie. Like. <laughs> so we get to the dinner and we're all mingling about, and I had a seat down at the table with the girls. The table was long. I'm all the way down here with the girls I came with. And then Peter and his guests are all the way at the front of the table. And I'm just, I'm playing my role, I'm playing the position. But Lionel Richie actually shows up. He shows up and I get introduced to Lionel Richie and I could tell that Lionel Richie doesn't know me, has never heard of me, but because I'm the only other black male at this event, he acts like he knows me. He gives me the black male brother salute and the whole handshake. And, you know what I'm I get the whole love like I know Lionel Richie. So now I'm hanging out with Lionel Richie and we, st we know s similar people in the music business. I start talking to him and he says, come sit with me. So now I'm sitting at the head of the table with Lana Richie and I'm looking at them girls like, see, I told you I'm going to speak when I sp I'm me. I'm not just here with y'all. I'm here on my own reconnaissance. All right. I might be your guest, but I'm also me. <laughs> um, so we have this beautiful, opulent, wonderful dinner. And, um, you know, I'm always the hookup. I'm always the plug. I don't know if y'all know, but I smoke pot. And I won't say that I smoke weed with Lana Richie. <laughs> but after the dinner, we were all hanging out. And you know, I'm, I'm hanging out with Lana Richie. I put my pops on the phone with Lana Richie because I grew up listening to, to the Commodores. You understand what I'm saying? Like Lana Richie is, is for, for my family, was a huge, huge part of my upbringing. So Lana Richie's telling me Commodore stories. He's telling me Michael Jackson stories. I put my, my father on the phone with Lana Richie and I'm, I'm feeling good. And, and because Lana Richie, meeting him, reminded me of my childhood, I went back to my room in the treehouse and I'm with all these girls. 
And it's like me, I remember it was just like the dude whose party it was, Lana Richie, his wife, and me. I'm the only dude there. And it's me and all these girls, and I'm like, okay, it is time for rapper adult fun. Yeah. God damn it. I'm gonna have a great time tonight. But we get into this conversation about family, and I'm explaining to them how much it means for me to meet Lana Richie. And I talk about my father and how I called my father, and I was so proud that I could put my father on the phone with one of his heroes, Lana Richie, and what my kids mean to me. And one of the girls, I don't remember if it was Brittany or Amber, <laughs> one of the girls all of a sudden at that moment remembered that she had a kid. <laughs> And she's like, you know what? I haven't seen my kid in so long. And I'm out here partying and I'm out here and my kid. And she started crying and getting really upset about the fact that she personally didn't feel like she was doing enough for her child. And now like the whole romantic sexual vibe was just, <laughs> no more adult fun, right? So we end up getting in this whole conversation about the importance of family and then I went to sleep, all right? all right? So I wake up the next morning, and I'm still supposed to be there another day, but when I wake up the next morning, I wake up to a commotion, and I hear yelling and arguing, and I go downstairs, and the kid from Norway, the Norwegian kid, was arguing with his boss. And the argument was about the fact that he had told them that he wanted that day off because it was his wife's birthday, but they told him that he had to work that day. And he's like, you know what? You treat me like shit. You don't take care of me. You don't care about my family. You know what? Fuck y'all. I'm out. And the kid quits right in front of me. And in that moment, I think about everything I saw the night before and all the decadence and all the, everything that I thought that I wanted to be a part of. But when I saw that the only person there that knew who I was as an artist, the only person there who was invested in me as a person, as an artist, he couldn't even stand to be there no more. He was leaving. And when he was leaving, something snapped to me. And I'm like, you know what? As fun as this looks, this is clearly not my scene. And you know what? Maybe I need to leave too. And I got in the car with that Norwegian kid and I went to the airport and I left. Now, I might have missed out on a lot of fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the lesson that I took from that is your day ones is your A ones. And you should rock with the people who rock with you. And if you find yourself in a situation where you're rocking with people who don't really rock with you, find that one person that rock with you and maybe leave with them. Peace, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>